Tap into the minds of the people, rather acknowledge before I dismiss one. Atheists, Muslim, Christians, Buddhists, they all got usage. All got perspective, it's a collective. Get to the bottom of the truth is, where the hearts uncovered. Where you detox them all of the lies you smothered. When them tribes to the kill you, or faith you recover. Yeah, peel off the makeup, we finna take off. Never said it'd be a cakewalk. Meditate till we charge up, that's who goes regardless. Decalcify my pineal, breaking language barriers. We saw millennials, planets passing, age rotations. Down me, we owe. So down me, we know. Sometimes we can't be slow, that's why my ears open. Every drop you add could complete the ocean. Speak up, play your part too. Been brought the ball, it's a hard tool. Reflect on all the juice like taught you. It's on you, tell the truth. Hi, everybody. I'm Kimberly, the Unseen Twisted Truth, and we are the People's Podcast, and this is my co-host, Henry. Hello. And, we, and we have Lauren Nicole. Hello, Lauren. How are you? Can you hear us? Uh-oh. No audio. Lauren, can you hear us? Can you hear us? We have no, we have no audio. Oh, dear. You can hear me, Henry, can't you? I can. Loud and clear, Kimberly. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. I think her... I don't know what's going on. I don't have her number to call her. Hi. Hi, can you hear us? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I can't hear you. You can't hear us. Um... I don't know. Hear you. I can hear her. <laughs> she's, Thank you. <laughs> she's talking now. You can hear Thank us? Thank you. Oh, she's not. Yeah. She looks absolutely lovely. <laughs> oh, she does look lovely, but I can't hear her. Or we can hear her. She can't hear us. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe her uh, volume has to be turned up. Um. I'm gonna text. I'm gonna text her um, on Messenger. Yeah. Shoot a message. Sorry, everybody. It's the darn technical stuff going on. It just seems to get us, get somebody every time. I'm sorry, Lauren. We're going to get you on here. We can, I can't wait to talk to you. <laughs> Did you message her? Yeah. I told her, turn the volume up on her, and I said, we can hear you. I'm going to try. Can I, should I try to rejoin? Yeah. Maybe? See, yeah. 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 Okay. She's going to go back and come back. She, everybody's going to go out and then come back in and see if that works. She's been sitting here patiently waiting for a minute. Like, we don't usually have speakers that come on early waiting, but she was prepared. Oh, she's, I know. She's so sweet. Just do that. Super, no. super sweet. Um, I didn't get a song from her, and um, I wish I would have because she's got amazing voice, and I've heard it before. That's how I know of her. Yeah, I, I, was, checking, I was checking her music out today. It's awesome. I know. I wish I would have had her send me a song. I don't know. I couldn't find it. If she did send it to me. Let me get the Facebook pulled up. I don't really have good audio. When you play songs, I hear them loud and clear. That's because I play it from the from the um, stream yard. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I, I would be doing like a third party. It would sound yeah. bad. But I always find it. <laughs> I can't play unless it's an MP3, so... Right. Anyway, how are you, Kimberly, while we're waiting? Blessed and highly favored. How are you, Henry? Fantastic. I feel like I actually got my hair looking nice today. So... (laughs) Those little things I'm I'm doing to feel good about myself. So the love trade was postponed because of weather. It was. Love trade was postponed. And it's a good thing they did because it just hammered down buckets... It did. Yeah. It rained terrible in Detroit. Well, we were in Wyandotte. Um, my partner and I were in Wyandotte and driving around Wyandotte um, on the on the highway. Oh, it was just nuts. It was crazy. There was accidents everywhere. I've never seen such craziness in the rain. We got stuck in the highway. Oh, 96 was just a nightmare. It was insane. Right. It was insane in Detroit, too. It definitely was insane. Oh, it just hammered buckets and it was flooding and crazy weather. I just finally let it up today. I've been outside all day in the yard doing stuff. 
I wonder if she can rejoin. I, I certainly hope she gets back here. She's Mental texting. Mental health. And... She's rejoining now. Oh, she had restarted her whole thing. Oh, fantastic. Oh, geez. Hold on. I've got something. All right. So, for the love trades being pushed back, not to this weekend, but the following weekend, I do believe it's the 27th. Let me check the calendar. There we go. Um, no, not the 27th. It would be um, the 29th. It's pushed back to the 29th. Correct. The love trade? Yeah, the love trade. Love trade. Well, fade. So it's pushed. I, I keep back. checking my cat in here during the podcast, and I find it rude to stand up, but I'm not going to leave my cat in here. I feel you. But yeah, so um, anybody who's listening, for everybody who is listening, um, it's pushed yeah. back to the 29th. 729, uh, I believe the same place. We'll get Jabril to. I do believe it's the same place as well. Yeah, I do believe so. I'm going to make a post about it. I got to. Add that on my list of things. Mm. How's your mental health today? Really, really good. Yeah, mine too. I think I'm not used to it. <laughs> yeah, right? We're going to keep it rolling with, with uh, good, solid content about mental health. Yeah, today's a um, mental health reflection. I would love to have her. Um, she's going to join again. So when she comes back on, that's what she writes about. That's what her music's all about. Um, that's why I'm so stoked about here she is. Oh, for sure. Can you hear us now? Yes. Good. Go. Right. So I was just saying how how um, excited I am to have you on because um, we've been covering um, mental health awareness a lot lately because it's very important. Well, good. I'm so happy to be a part. Thank you for having me a part of the show. Yeah, so um, we we named the show um, Mental Reflection um, because all your music strives from mental health. Yes. And I love that. Thank it, you. It's a healing place. I love that. Yeah, it's really important. Honestly, I don't know where I'd be without music and like writing my emotions because it really helped me get through a lot of stuff. So I was checking to see if you sent me a, an MP3, but I don't think you did. Let's see. Okay. Um, let me see. So if you do send it to me, it'll take me a second, but I can I can download it real quick and put it on. Let me see. I'm on my phone now, too. By the way, my computer started acting wonky literally right when we started. That, it, it's probably because of us. I ain't going to hold you up. Um, we tend to um, mess I with... I podcast for my iPhone every time I try to move a computer. It's so we tend to mess less with Did technology. Uh, we it's good. we tend to have interferences <laughs> with technology. Um, we speak on things that they don't want us to speak on about. So, right, they're trying to sabotage. Us. They are trying yeah, to sabotage us. Right. They are. My. So, what got you into music, and how old were you, and um, what's it done for you? So I got into music, I want to say officially when I was like 14, 15, as far as like recording songs. Um, but I started writing when I was 10 years old. Um, what what got me into it is I was experiencing a lot of like childhood trauma. Um, I have a recent album called Daddy Issues. Um, me and my dad haven't had the best relationship growing up. So it was just a lot of stuff going on in our household. Um, he tended to be very emotionally and verbally abusive. And as I got older, I started to honestly, like as a kid, you can't, you don't understand what verbal and emotional abuse is, but right. you know how, to, how it makes you feel. Right. So, um, yeah, that was just really hard because as a kid, it was kind of hard to comprehend. Like, why is this person treating me like this on top of trying to feel, figure out where you fit in in school, figure out where you fit in with friends, yeah. life, like it was just a lot of pressure, um, so, yeah, I was like, I need something to help me express. I started off with dancing, but I injured myself, and that's kind of how I started writing, because dancing stopped. So it was like, okay, how else can I get my emotions out? And that's what I started songwriting. So you do all your own music? I apologize, Henry. Yeah. No, yeah. I was, I was going to say, um, uh, uh, people with that, that traumatized childhood, it makes anything, everything in life hard sometimes. And, Besides the, the only ways you can express yourself, I mean, 
like jobs and relationships and things suffer before that. And it's good to have music there as a buffer to really get that out and process that grief. Yeah, because it's hard to, especially too, I encourage therapy a lot. Therapy has helped me through everything. But like you said, there's so many things, like I want to say, what is the word? Um, stigmas on therapy and talking about your emotions. And like, oh, you're, if you talk about your emotions, you're crazy. If you go to therapy, you're crazy. You're weak if you need medicine. No, like talking about your emotions is strength. That's one of the most bravest things you could do is be vulnerable. So, yeah, it's, it's hard. Oh, yeah. The biggest problem with therapy is it's the availability and some of the stipulations they put on the doctors for it. Huh? Nobody should be reaching out so hard to find therapy, and I hear it all the time. Yes. Yeah, and it gets expensive. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. So expensive. I it's know. Ridiculous. I called seven different therapists to um, set up an appointment, and no one called me back. Stop. I would have done, no, no, and it wasn't technically for me, but I, I had insurance, so I wanted to do it so that I can get these medication for someone else. But I just was trying to, because it doesn't hurt to talk to somebody regardless. Yeah. So yeah. no one's called me back at all, and I tried for two months straight. Two months. And by that time, I would have done killed myself if that was the case. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's that terrible. No one called me so back. Sorry. And it's okay, though, because, like I said, it wasn't for me anyhow. It's just the fact yeah. of that it's crazy that what if it was for me? Exactly. What if What if you needed that? What if you were truly on your wit's edge? Like, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. That's so frustrating. I wish there was more of a, like, a direct line, not that you have to, like, oh, can you go through your insurance? Can you go through this? Like, no, what if I need help right now? Nobody answers the phone. What exactly. they do is it goes right to voicemail, and then you have to leave a message on an answering service. That's how it is. Nobody really answers the phone to help you with it. So It's ridiculous. Uh -huh. we got to have peer support that's going to save this and stuff. People helping therapists, aid, to, and extending these programs on the people who are darn experienced and ready to help. Um, yes. It's hard to be able to get a degree, too, and that holds a lot of people back from actually doing a lot of good. You know? It does. For sure, for sure. It does. I wish it was... We didn't have to depend on that to, to get it going. Like, because like you said, it's such a common issue, but it's also kind of hard to attain. <laughs> yeah. And people still suffer, you know, the longer you put it off. It's just we've been sleeping on it. I can't believe this hasn't changed in so long. Yeah. Well, hopefully one day, um, me and my mom, because me and my mom have a mental health talk show, I'm working on creating a nonprofit organization called Impactful one day to like, creates a organization where therapy is direct and we have those resources to get to people ASAP instead of like waiting. So that's a goal. I'm working on that. So <laughs> let me let me help you with achieving that. First thing is stop saying you're working on it and stop saying that you, it's one day. Yeah. We you guys already have it going and it's already true. there. That's true. So speak you're it to right. it as if you already got it going. That's right. the, that's what holds it's people back. People hold yeah. themselves back. That's true. So now one day, it. it's needed what now, is, so now it's available. Now you're doing it. What is the name of what of your uh, show, at least right now, that you're doing? Um, we can put it in the comments here. Oh, okay. It's called, Con uh, not Pontiac, it's in Pontiac Universal Crimes. Do you know that group? Uh-huh. Yep, it's called Mental Health Talk with Laura Nicole and Ida Logan. We do it every Friday at 7 p.m. live. Okay, Mental Health Talk with Laura... Lauren Nicole and Ida Logan. I D A L O G A N. So I want to touch base on something real quick just because we're talking about this. I have a nine year old okay. grandson. Oh, oh, I was talking to. Did You couldn't get it, Henry? No, my computer's acting up. I'm sorry. Right now. It's all good. These computers are tripping on us tonight. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. I'm sorry. I don't want to cover up what you're talking about. If you go into, Lauren, if you see it, if you go into more, it'll show comments, and then you can type a comment. Oh, let me see. Comments. More. It'll oh, say, okay. I see. Yep. I just pull it up. Okay. Mental health talk. With Lauren I'm still working on getting you that MP3 too. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I might have sent it to you a couple weeks ago, so it might not be showing up. Did you send it in the, in the, with the email? I think I did. A okay, weeks. I'll have to go back and look in then. That's a whole okay. other can of worms. Sending files is an incredibly huge problem nowadays. It is. Like, it is. Why? 
it's so hard for no reason. Nuts. Yeah. We have satellites up there that can that shoot lasers that you know, do hair removal on you. And it's just crazy that we, can, we yeah. can't do that. Okay, so what I was saying was um, I was having a talk with my um, grandson, and he's not quite... He's not quite um, having an understanding or overstanding of how his words affect people and how he yeah. carries himself at being nine. I'm not mad at him. He's nine. Yeah. Yeah. So I was having a talk with him and I was um, touching bases on things that was sensitive to him because I said to him, you know, you hurt my feelings. Oh. So I had to let him know he hurt my feelings. And... I had to express that because I couldn't let it go because I want him to be aware of his actions, how they affect people. Yes. So I was talking to him and I told him it has nothing to do with what I asked you to do or what you said to me. It's the fact that my feelings got hurt because you're supposed to be my partner and my teammate and you're my heart. And when mm-hmm. you don't take in consideration what I say and how I feel, that hurts me. Mm. So I said, and I just want you to be aware of my feelings because I don't want to show my, I don't want to put my feelings aside for you. And then like, I, mine don't matter. And when all of our feelings matter. So I'm talking to him. Tears were rolling down my face because I, I love this person more than life itself. So I'm speaking to him from a heart, from a place of the heart. He starts to cry. And I said to him, tell me what's going on. Now, I can put this on a bunch of things. One, he's a boy. One, he's an Aquarius. Another thing, he, he just, he's around a bunch of kids, so they don't show emotions. He's, yeah. a, he's got a family of six children, so he don't show emotions. Mm. So I said to him, tell me what's going on. Please, you're allowed to express your feelings just like I did, and I will not judge you on them, and I want to hear them because they matter to me because you, I value you. Yeah. So I was speaking to him. He still wouldn't tell me. He's like, oh, nothing. He's like, I just, my throat's a little dry. And I was like, no, I could tell something's going on. You could tell something's going on. He's got tears rolling down his face. He's like, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. tell me what you're feeling. He would not express his feelings at all. I can't force him because then it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be natural for him. And I want him to naturally be able to um, voice his opinion and his feelings. Yeah. So I don't want him to feel it. I don't want him to have that trauma forced where he was forced to do it. So I tried getting him to naturally do it, and I couldn't. I couldn't get him to um, express his feelings to say what was going on with him at all. Yeah. At all. Well, well I think, honestly, yeah. like from my experience, because I used to be the same way. Like my mom could not get me to say a peep because the relationship with me and my dad, it was emotions aren't in this house. Like you're not allowed to cry. You're not allowed to this, like emotions are a weak thing. Um, but my mom was the softer side. So I say just continue to, to do that because it's not really forcing, but it's really just, again, I say unto you, letting them know that you can be comfortable telling me your emotions. Yeah. Because the, the more that a kid hears it, the more that'll kind of relax. People are kind of like tense up because emotions aren't a comfortable thing to talk about of course and they're and they're not but i don't get him all the time i don't this is just for the Uh summer so he's changed dramatically from the last time i did get him because you are growing in those ages these are real important ages in your life where you are finding who you are definitely so i work on approach be humorous a little bit sometimes i always do no i always do i i I know i know i'm definitely good at approaching him it's just the fact of and i'm i don't i watch what i say when i speak to you henry i watch what i say to people i say it with discernment i don't come across hard unless i know that they're the type that needs it i've told you you have before and you've been like well yes i did and that's the case doesn't it but for him though um that's my heart for real for real. I will die for him yeah. so like I, I will never come across mean to him to hurt his feelings on purpose yeah. but I need to him to express his and as a man one he's told not to and two um, yeah. I just don't I don't know what he goes through I don't know if it's his is his sign or whatever but it's they need mm. to start it now children need to be free <laughs> now as that's children that's- and but, I think it's good that you are starting out with him even though you don't have him like making yeah. sure that do have them to keep it consistent because that consistency while you do have them can make a huge impact even when he's away of from course him. of course so continue to because that's just going to help him regulate his emotion it's going to help him understand his emotions and other people's emotions and it's just going to help him along the way even if it's not something that he has when he's at home i just wish more um more things were taught in school about feeling hours 
I just, another thing we're creating right now. Yes. Into existence. That's a part of our organization. Perfect. <laughs> because the school has them way more times than anybody else does. And bullying is huge in school. And not being able to express yourself and show your emotions and explain how you feel is very important. That's a crucial place because you're there all the time. Yeah. There, yeah. Like, everything. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Go ahead. Yeah, you can go. You can go. Oh, I was going to say everything we learn about life, we learn on the playground, basically. Basically. Yeah, you know, right, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And it's crazy because, like you said, Learning how to regulate your emotions, learning how to express them, process them is honestly one of the main things that you need to survive in life, but it's not taught. No. We learn how to do the freaking Pythagorean theorem and two times two, which is important. Like, yeah, we need math, we need all that other stuff, but why isn't mental health something that we need to be active, something that we're actively learning in school when that's something that everybody goes through? I don't know, and I, I'm not in school now. When I was in school, it was not big. On the, I've heard a lot of, they didn't care about how kids were interacting and the bullying or anything like that. They just wanted to pack each other to death. And, they, yeah. and there was a lot of a lot of weird relationships between principals and, and favorite students and favorite mm -hmm. students. And that, that was hard. That was a hard, absolute terrible time. School's a fight for everybody, I think. Yeah, because it makes you feel like you're unprotected and that you have nobody on your side, that nobody's, like, hearing you or seeing you or understanding you. So it's like, okay, is there something wrong with me? Like, why isn't anybody on this side? So I get it. <laughs> that caste system is in, in school is like, you're absolutely, if you find yourself at the bottom rung, like, I don't know, if you crapped your pants at some third grade or something, then no one will talk to you for, like, years and years yeah. and years. And that's traumatizing. And we have no, we had nobody to talk to about stuff like that. And the counselors, they don't really care. They, they act like they do in school, oh. but they honestly don't. No, they just take your appointment. Oh, how are you feeling? Oh, okay, go back to class. It's not an in-depth thing. They just have the label. No. Uh, the name. They're not really interested. No, so when I... When they I don't pull get features enough. No, they don't. So when I paid up um when I pulled up your information, um it just says MP threes. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, let me see. Uh, let me find out it didn't really feel send you the file. It didn't. It sent me everything else and all it says MP threes and then it says show less. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me try again. They did me dirty. Okay, let me try again. When I couldn't hear you earlier, yes, your hair looks fantastic. You look amazing. I don't know if you got me or not. I was saying you don't have audio, but also I saw that. Yes, amazing. Thanks <laughs> so much. Thank you. I tried a new trick with these little curling locks, so I appreciate that. I got you're it. About it. Yes, you're on point. I mine for the first time in like months. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love my ears. Yes, it's so cute. I've been working on it. I had an undercut. For the longest it's time, I've been trying it out. So, I like yeah. it. <laughs> so much, honey. You're so welcome. Henry is so gorgeous. Thank you. So anyway, so um, you do you you do music. You've done it since you were younger. You do it for healing purposes. Uh, what would you tell somebody younger that's trying to get into music? What would you say to them? Um, I'd say just start. I feel like a lot of people, kind of how you were uh, talking about earlier. We always say, like, oh, I don't have this yet, or, oh, I can't do that until I do this. Yeah. Literally, all I did was go into my notepads on my phone and start writing a song. Didn't have beats back then. Didn't even know that songs really had beats. One day, after writing, I'm like, oh, you know what? This would sound good with some music behind it. So, went on YouTube, started finding beats. Eventually, I ran across my own producer. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I ran into managers. Eventually, I ran into people who wanted to record me. So, mm -hmm. I feel like starting something is kind of like an introduction to your path aligning with you. All you have to do is start and then everything will kind of come together as long as you're intentionally doing the work and you believe and have faith in what you're actually doing. For sure. Uh -huh. Exactly. When it, when it comes to like writing writing beats and doing things like that, uh, what do you use instruments? What, what's your inspiration? What you go with? So I have a beast, uh, not a beat, <laughs> I have a producer. He's okay. in Brazil. Um, and yeah, he, he creates all my beats and instruments. He, he uses a lot of instruments, honestly, guitar, trombone, <laughs> he incorporates a lot of stuff into it, but, um, really it just depends on what kind of mental space I'm in as far as the genre or the mood. I don't really put myself in a box. Like my daddy issues album was more of like an alternative 
like pop vibe because I was angry and I was hurt and I was sad and I was broken. Um, and the stuff I'm working on now is more like R and B pop. So it's just what type of mental state and what type of message that I want to convey in whatever I'm writing. Oh, I'm real digging that R and B pop too. I feel that in you, and you are a wonderful performer too. I just Thank I have girl, you. Guy ask you know, know what what the process is, you know, and everything. And that's fantastic. Thank Your video is real great production. Too. Ah, thank you so much. Oh, I love the red outfit with the straps. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. So getting you getting you to come on was a little bit of a trick, and I'm glad we finally were able to connect. Um, yes. you're, you're a very very busy person. Um, yes. Not only did I reach out to you way before you were on um, Overdope, and shout out to them, they're my people. Yes, but not so not only um, before you were on there, I hit you up, but also at the time, um, which I'm glad it never happened because everything happens for a reason. But the business partner I was with tried to get you to come to one of our events, and. Mm, um, yeah. You were like, oh, yeah, no, I, I charge 450 bucks or something, and I bring people, da, da, da. I don't know what you said, but I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, whatever happened. Did I say that? I think you did. What? 450 I think you did. I don't know. I might have been somebody else. I think I do know what you're talking about. I said I was, um, I think I was booked already. I don't know. He told me that you said a price, which I don't. I don't believe half the things he said. Anyhow, that's why he's my okay, ex business yeah, partner. I, so, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> He did tell me that you you come off across a price and said that you were probably booked that day, anyways. Yeah, I was definitely booked. So, but I don't care. I, I'm glad it turned out that way. <laughs> Honestly, I am. Yeah. Um, just that uh, people got to know their worth, and I'm glad you know yours because yeah. some people do sell themselves short, and they yeah. they don't appreciate what gifts they have. Yeah, that's true. Because I mean, honestly, like. This is my life. This is my passion. This is my job. This is my business. I spend money, tears, blood, sweat, time. So you definitely, and honestly, I'm just now learning that. Like, I'm just now learning to charge in certain situations yeah. because I do put a lot into my craft. It costs to mix and master. It costs, I record myself so I don't have to go to other people's studio sessions anymore. But even to do that, that's time. I have mm -hmm. a nine to five job and like taking time out of that it's a lot like it's really hard trying to make it as an artist so i'm just now going like girl you put a lot into this you can charge because you got bills to pay <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that neither at all because yeah, if they charge you for air right? and water they can charge you for a yes. craft that you're good at i'm just exactly. saying there's nothing wrong with that exactly but i'm I I'm, I'm grateful that we finally were able to touch base um I, this, you have a powerful message in the world needs to hear it. So, I mean, yeah. it, um, if you can get those songs over, that'd be great. If not, um, maybe you're able to play something from your end or something. It's just that I want, okay. I want people to hear your message. What's um, your email again? Do what I said at Yahoo. Okay, I like that email. <laughs> Do what I said. I like Do what I said. <laughs> I've never emailed you. <laughs> No, um, music's such a good communicator, so I'm glad to see this rise in, in, in awesome and, and interesting-looking artists pushing for mental health and pushing for doing better and, and encouraging yes. young people to listen and making it cool, because it is. Empathy and emotions are cool. It <laughs> it's is. It's cool to be it a good is. person. And it's been made to be not cool for too long. Like, mm -hmm. why, why is it not cool? Because at the end of the day, you hiding your emotions, you bottling it up, and then you getting triggered and popping on somebody or bleeding on somebody who didn't cut you is what's really not cool. So sure. I feel like that's why it's so important to actually talk about it because it's not worth carrying all of this silent, silent pain and nobody even knows that you're not okay. Oh, no. And or projecting it onto people who don't deserve it because you had a shitty time. And yes. And that's what people do. That's what they people do. They they take their, their trauma and without healing first, they yes. just reflect and, re, and, and push it onto somebody mm -hmm. else without realizing that they are the problem at the end. Even though they might not have been the problem during the situation, they became the problem when they allowed that situation to become them. Exactly. And that's the importance of self-reflection and always looking at you. I always say this. If you can't look yourself in the mirror, you can't point the fear at anybody else. Right. 
to a good self-evaluation because at the end of the day, we're not perfect. We can all make mistakes. We can all do things wrong. We can all hurt people's feelings, even if it's not intentional. So it's like, okay, what did I do in this situation that could have possibly caused this outcome? Yeah. If you check all the bars, you still could have done something wrong. Maybe something you allowed that you didn't, you shouldn't have allowed for too long. There's, there's so many different scenarios that I feel like you could either be the victim, victor, whatever the case is, there's always something that you can learn from or mm-hmm. do better. Accountability is so important. Yes. Yes. Even when you are the person who has gotten done wrong, there's accountability in that. Okay. Yeah. What, what do I feel about myself? Why I allow this person to treat me like this? Do I feel unworthy of good treatment? Do I feel like I'm not good enough to experience good treatment? It's like so much deeper than a surface level. Like, oh, they did this to me. Like, no. Why did Why did you allow that? With yes. with my past relationship, I had to apologize to myself for allowing yeah. that, and apologize to myself for taking the agreements that they put upon me as if they were mine when I didn't have to do that because. The issue lied with me in the long run. They are allowed to be whoever they want to be. I can't yeah. control who they are. Mm-hmm. How I receive it is on me. And yes. how I take their words and the agreements upon myself as if they're mine, even though they never said they were mine, they were just putting them out there. It's a, it's a weird tactic and it's a gaslighting situation. I still had the, um, the ability to control myself. Mm. So when I wasn't able to control myself, that's when I had to apologize to myself for allowing it. But you have to realize the only thing in this world you can control is self. Facts. Facts. And a lot of people don't realize that that everybody is blaming (laughs) someone else for something. That is so true. Literally all do is control how you react to things, how you feel about things. Because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, as much as we'd like to be like, hey, this is not right. You shouldn't do this. People just don't care. And that's a hard truth. To they accept. don't. But some people really just don't care. So you really have to just be accountable for your own emotions and how, what you allow and what you tolerate. Because my mom always told me, you treat people, you teach people how to treat you. Yes. And if they can't treat you how you deserve, then they don't need to be in mm-hmm. your life. So- yeah, the killing people with kindness to you. When you come back at people with, with niceness, like, are you wrong that I hurt you? Uh, what's wrong if yeah. someone costs you they expect you to, to get agitated and, and coming back and that you never know you can make a great friend and i have make great friends out of people you know yeah. it's just weird the way things play out yes people want want and long for connection more than their hardened exterior of abuse and trauma what, what for sure believe. yes that's true and honestly i love that you said that because people who are cutting us and making us leave all of, like just how you're, they're making you traumatized, they have this load of trauma that they haven't sorted through, they haven't regulated, they haven't talked about. So you use the word projection. All people do when you get hurt in situations, they're projecting their own traumas on us. And we just ended up being the sacrifice of whatever their experience was. And it's unfortunate, but I will say in all of my traumatizing moments, I feel like I wouldn't be the person I am today without it. For and sure, me too. <laughs> going through it. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I, when I say I was depressed so many times and had suicidal thoughts and just didn't want to be here anymore because it just felt like this revolving door of just like, does this ever end? Like, is life always going to be like this? But kind of how you guys said, I realized that like only I can control how I feel. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's when I kind of stopped being depressed as often or having anxiety as often. Yeah. And that's when you realize when you have anxiety that the issue, you have an issue. So you have to stop and realize what are the triggers. You cannot be mad. And I need to repeat this and say this clearly. You can't be mad at somebody else because they pulled your triggers. Mm. You have to be mad about your triggers. Yes. Fix your triggers because they are not the issue. Your triggers are. You need to feel, you need to realize what made you. Trigger. Yeah. And what's, what what was not healed yet about you? What is it about you that's not healed? Exactly. There's certain things, you know, those triggers, if you end up in situations like that, you know, being in control of yourself enough to get out of a situation even is a is a good tactic. For because, sure. You know, I'm never going to go swimming in the ocean because I can't see the bottom. I'm terrified. It's Ooh. a trigger. Deep water's a trigger. But I'll go look at it. I can spin the fuck out of it. I'm not going to go on a carnival cruise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> so I'm just avoiding those situations, learning how to, and, and protecting yourself. Hell yeah. So I, I wrote this, and, and um, I want everyone to hear it. It says, I love being around you for the light you see me in. The energy I feel when I'm around you. Yes, you, you reading this. Mm. I created my reality, and, and if you're ready for, um, if you're ready, if you're reading this, I chose to have you in my life. Thank you. Love always perfectly self. And the reason why we keep repeating cycles is because we're not perfect. Now, if you want to become perfect, and perfect doesn't mean who, there's not a definition for perfect. There's not a judge that's saying, hey, this isn't perfect. I am perfect, including my flaws. Yeah. Because I am aware of those, and I am mindful of them. That's facts. I love that. That's beautiful. So from people to think that they're not perfect, and there's no such thing as perfect, that's, that's your problem, though, not mine, because... Um, at the end of the day, you are perfect. Who are you? Who sit? Who is it that's telling you you're not? Yes. You just got to do that for good. If you know I'm perfect, don't be like, oh, I can't hear you over how awesome I am. You know? That's what I'm saying because we are. We are all perfect, even if we are flawed. We're perfectly flawed. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you're better than. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're better than the next. It just means that you are created just the way you're supposed to be created for you. Yes, I love that. That is okay. so cool. You're not like anybody else. Mm -hmm. You're the way you are. Yeah. So perfectly I, flawed is what we all are. Anymore, but... <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. I'm going to have to write that down. Go ahead. <laughs> but that's what people do. They, they hold themselves to standards and agreements that other people put out there that aren't fair because... They're not a judge. They're not the one that created it. All the um, standards and laws are saying that you have to be this to be successful, or you have to do this to be normal. Like, what is all these words? What is normal? Exactly. What That's is true. perfect? What is flawless? What is, you know, ideal? Yeah. What yeah. is normal? There is none. There is none, though. It's somebody else's standards. Literally. Something that social media and society has created. Yeah. That's what if you, whatever doesn't kill you, whatever practice or routine you're doing is normal to you, isn't killing you and helping you flourish. I guess that'd be normality, wouldn't it? Did <laughs> colonies get along pretty well? I guess it's well, we're, not we're hyper evolved humans. <laughs> so having a mental reflection is very important. It is. That doesn't mean sit all day and worry about how you are and um, how you treat others, yeah. but at least be mindful of the fact that um, you're not the only one in this world and somebody else is going through something. Yes, yes. And I feel like that's something I think about on a daily. Um, my mom always taught me to kind of like treat others the way you want to be treated mm -hmm. on top of, I don't care how somebody looks, what their, their culture is how they act, how they, you know what I mean? Just treat everybody the same. Because at the end of the day, we all have these silent battles that we're dealing with. My yes. brand is this two sides person, right? I have a side that's bubbly, and that's the person you meet on my interviews or, you know, just in person in general. And then if you go back and look at some of my music, you see this darker emo version of mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. That's because I feel like all of us carry that. We, we all, all do. Yeah, this inner, dark, emotional, tra traumatized version of ourselves. Yeah. But what do, what's the first thing we say when somebody says, oh, like, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Are I'm you good, though. That's not what I say, but yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> yeah, so. I speak, shit, I speak stuff to existence, so every time someone asks me how I'm doing, I always tell them I'm blessed and highly favored regardless. Oh, yes. Regardless. Well, yeah. You went out? Because no one's going to start up. Well, the problem started in childhood. And, that's why I'm <laughs> and it'd be nice if they did, <laughs> though. That's the thing. That's a good friend. That, exactly. We have to build lasting connections with friends. And I was talking to a therapist the other day, and I'm like, oh, isn't the goal of therapy to eventually get human beings to be able to therapeutically take care of themselves yeah. and others? And then once you strengthen connections with people, and people start actually communicating. It's gonna. People will just be associating, reaching out, and talking, and being expressive. And, well, it's not gonna get rid of the need for therapy, or especially genetic mental illness and things. But we sure will have a nice cushion for people to get better. Yeah. As a, as a whole demographic, you know. A thousand percent. We all just started talking. That's what I said. Yeah. That's really all it. That is. is. 
problem solver right there. The problem is we none of us talk. We have to be the kind of that earlier forced to talk or not even and it's not that we're we feel forced because like nothing made us feel forced. We're forced because people have made it a stigma. Mm -hmm. That's the okay. So it's like trying to reverse generations and generations of this way of thinking or this way of responding to stuff. Yeah. It's impossible. It's not impossible, but it's, it's so hard. Like, you yeah, it's not, but it's not supposed it's, to be, though. In this right. society, it's not meant to be that way. It's not meant to be easy. Nothing's meant to be easy. We're repeating cycles of from something our ancestors did wrong. So we're going to keep repeating this generational curse of um going over and over and over and over until we start to heal. Until yeah. we start breaking those generational curses. Until we start being mindful of ourselves until we it all all the change starts with you yeah that's fact actually yeah our guest literally it's going to start with all these entertainers musicians people community efforts uh, it's people. with a whole if you have a mirror in front of you and you have fingers point it that's who it starts with period oh yeah you're absolutely right um that's true because if people are more mindful of themselves and more um took accountability for their own actions maybe there wouldn't be so many assholes in this world Oof, you can say that again oh my god i'm just saying maybe it's so unfortunate how many people are unaware of their actions and some people are aware of their actions and like i said earlier they just don't care they just don't care and a lot of people have the mentality well i have to go through this when i was a kid and, you know this happened to me some people use their trauma as an excuse to be a bad person to yeah yeah. Some people are villains. Some people look at themselves in, as antagonists and, and villains. And, yes, and they get they kick, making somebody else feel the way that they did because it makes them feel power. Like, oh, I'm powerful. It's like, no, that's not cute. I, I use my pain as a reason to make people feel the opposite because I know I would never want anybody to feel the way I was made to feel. No, that's just a, that's a whole new level of just being a socio or a psychopath. I'm actually a sociopath. You know, I realize that a lot of the time. I just because I always brought up, I will do things and not consider people's feelings. But really, you know, yourself before you wreck yourself. I, I, I like don't do that first thought if you have a bunch of stuff. Uh, think about it. Think about what you say to people. Every action and stuff. It's, it makes life so much easier. You know what the best thing about Henry is, though? He's aware of himself, exactly. and he's, he's there to help others that aren't. Exactly. You acknowledged it, and like she said, you're aware of it. And I feel like that's the first step in even being aware. Something that you can acknowledge is something that you can work on and change. Yeah, because when you're not I mean, aware of it... To, talking about myself. When you're not well, aware of it... I do yeah. talk to a lot of addicts and alcoholics, so... Mostly every day, all day, I do a lot of sponsorships. That's, that's what I'm saying. That. So he, he's there to help others that aren't aware of it. And that's the plus because, Henry, if it wasn't for people like you, then there wouldn't be people like us who've healed. Because everybody yeah. needs somebody like you. There's got to be a middle ground. I don't believe in court-ordered uh, recovery programs. I no. think those fail more often than they do. I think some people don't even like recovery programs. I'm one of them. I was an AA for years, and I just couldn't roll with it. So I am somewhere between a middle ground of just self-understanding. Yeah. And, yeah, there's there's different frame. I'm not going to go off on it. But there's there's got to be more. There's got to be more. People need more. People, don't, do. people I mean, will not heal unless they, they want to, happen. though, Henry. That's it. You can't force someone to be someone they don't want to be. They got to have right, that well, want. I talk about the core recovery. That's program. exactly you can't it. Really force someone because uh -uh. yeah, they don't want it. It does. It does work sometimes. I'm not going to shit on it completely, but it's there's got to be more options, and it's very hard to find meetings. And there is an app out there. I'm going to actually have to try and find that and share the app that helps you find any in, in AA meetings in your area. But it's just not prevalent enough information yeah so yeah. next thursday we have um our podcast is going to be about healing the inner child i wish i would have had you come on for that one because that i didn't even realize what your next album was about yeah yeah yep. oh, future endeavors yes yeah. that inner child because that's where all of it stems from because we are all still at a certain age in our head Still yeah. 11, 12, 13, whatever that we were damaged at. We're still that age until we heal it. A thousand percent. Literally, I, my inner child has 
probably just got tapped into the last couple years as far as healing. So, yeah, that stuff cuts real, real deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, do you all have an embarrassing thing from your childhood that you can clutch and hold on to in times of hardship? Like a blanket or something still? <laughs> I do. I got a blanket just so I put myself on this. But I got a lot Absolutely. Who loves that? I don't. Know. <laughs> you know. I have a stuffed animal named Charlie that I've actually had since I was like 10 years old. I didn't even realize it though until you just said it, but I guess that is from my childhood that gives me someone to comfort and my mom. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I was just curious. <laughs> no, and there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. There's absolutely, I don't. That's one thing people shouldn't be embarrassed about. Yeah. I don't. You I have my. Squishmallows. A lot of adults are dry buying animals now. <laughs> Do you know what I do have though, Henry? I have my son and I had him at seventeen, so that's the only thing I have for my youth. I don't I don't have anything either. And the thing is it's it's you stop and you think. And maybe you should hold on to some of those things. Yeah. We don't really grow up. I mean, what are you gonna do tonight? You're gonna be like, I'm not gonna eat any ridiculous like health food tonight. I'm probably going me, I'm gonna go grab my double fudge brownie ice cream. Yes. Because the because I'm an adult and I can't. <laughs> we should, we gotta do that. Me and you both. I love it. No. Not I. Being a big kid. It's okay. If everybody had a kid day, we should have national kid day where everybody knows everybody goes to work. You look at your neighbors and go, You wanna play? With G.I. Joe's or basketball? Yes, I love that. We should have that. I feel like it would take at least real life, real world stress off for a day. People need that. Truly. They do need that. Because life is so hard. Life is always life in. And that's the sad part, too. You can't control what happens to you. Yeah. Like, all you can do is respond, react, and cope through it. So, I feel like that's another reason why all of us are going through this mental battle every day. Because things happen to us every day that we can't control. And it's like, okay, all, literally all you can do is be like, okay, how can I move forward knowing that this is my, my circumstance? Oh, yeah. And not to red pill it too much, but this society is really set up to drive you nuts. It really is. They got it. We got enough resources to make life good for everybody on this planet, I think. Yeah. We can all grow seeds and stuff. There's got to be a big shift in everything here. There really does. I agree. Um, there is a big shift, though. If you stop and look, because of um, technology and um, the internet and stuff that we're more aware of things around the globe and that we have a, a, a easier way of connecting. Back then, um, I'm older than both of you guys and we had a chat line on the phone. Huh? I said you look real good, you look 21. Thank you. No. <laughs> Almost 50. But anyway, so it's the thing is though we had a chat line that we could call called a party chat line like your mom probably knows about it lauren and you yeah. you call this number and that's how you talk to everybody and that's how we would party and hang out and stuff while we we're still at home but yeah able to Our reach out to everybody party line. yeah party a party lines. line wow wow yeah. yeah um yahoo had a chat thing um at one time um what was it? Uh, I C I O Q or something had a chat line. Um, there's a bunch of them that were chat lines, and that's how we met people because this was when internet wasn't huge like it is now. Now you can zoom anybody or watch a TikTok or watch this and watch that. This is the day and age that people need to speak more now, anyways, because now it's more easily to be accessible. They are. They absolutely are too, and it's great. We're doing that on this platform right here, trying to make a difference with things in our in our movements and what we do. For it's sure. Awesome. For we sure. We can't demonize the internet. It's the most logical step we were going to take. We just have to embrace yeah. it for the good yeah. things we can do. And the funny thing right. is, like we spoke, like we spoke on earlier about people blaming things. People are blaming social media for their problems and their love life. They're blaming Facebook for their relationships going terrible. And I just stop and think may, that that is a, uh, an excuse to um, be less than. Yes. Just blame it on social media. My mate's cheating, really? so I'm going to blame it on social media. Maybe your mate's social cheating because dogs. you're a <laughs> shitty person. Maybe your mate wants to find someone else that makes them feel better because you don't listen to them. No. Yeah. Well, my wife, have you heard of Ashley Madison? Because mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, my wife told me about this site called Ashley Madison that's literally designed for cheating husbands. And I'm like, no. Yeah, for real. You got to look this shit up. 
It's true. And that, oh no. Oh no. Turn it back on, Henry. Turn your camera back on. Ah, there we go. I, got, I ended up on Reddit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's really, it, it's a thing like that. It's shit like that. It's awful. Like, what's that that's like circumnavigating mental health completely and putting a post where you can just screw yourself over. Yeah. <laughs> but that's terrible. That's how it is for anything. Listen, I cannot go and offer a massage to anybody at a hotel without them thinking that um, I'm going to have sex with them. That's how fucked up society has made that's things to be. Awful. Because of Craigslist, because of OnlyFans, because of all this other bullshit sites and, and apps and, and places that they use massages as a keyword for undercover sex. Being a whore. Yeah. Kimberly, yeah, really, I wish you could rub my neck right now. It is out. Dude, I would love to help you for real, for real. I would love to help you a lot. And, and, and people, and that's the thing, see. You can't, you just don't go around telling people you love them and mean it anymore. Love is another word that people use as oh, if it's yeah. toilet paper. And it's, 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 and I'm going to use this and it's going to be funny, but I, that's not my intent. It's a shitty thing, though, to use love so loosely. Yeah, that's a hard word. It is, because it has such a deep meaning. Like, love is not, I want to say, an easy feeling to attain for somebody. So, mm -mm. it's that normal. We Especially for young people. people. We get what we want. It's yeah. Weaponizing love, that happens a lot, too. Yeah. And abusive yes. situations. Like, it can be completely misconstrued and turn that's into something thousands. terrible. And, and that's how you can get into, like, sticky situations with relationships. Trauma right? bonds. On the Overdose podcast, I was talking about, like, love bonds. I mean, and like being with narcissistic personalities and like stuff like that and love bombing. Mean, they'll tell you you're their, you're their soulmate after the first day. And yeah. They can keep you on this high and then they end up gaslighting, manipulating, feeding on you. So it's crazy out here. I'm not a fan of dating because of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that. And the trauma, the trauma, you can have a trauma bond and you stay with this person just because misery loves company. And you're in a place of comfort because yes. you are miserable. And that's sad because that's not how it should be. A thousand percent. And that's and that also stems from your inner child. Mm -hmm. However that parent or person that raised you, treated you, that's the type of dynamic that you usually are attracted to in your friendships and your romantic relationships. For me with my dad, verbally, emotionally abusive, narcissistic, on and off, in and out. That's the type of man I was attracted to. And yeah. I'm not anymore after therapy, but that's what I was used to. I didn't believe I was worthy or good enough because if my dad treated me like this, this must be like who I'm supposed to be with. Even though it didn't feel good, it was what was comfortable yeah, to me. Right. So, People kind of frown on Freud a lot, but it's scary how accurate some of that shit is. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it's a brutal, but... <laughs> it's very, but it's real. So when they come up that song, Comfortly Numb, Henry, that, that meant a lot. Mm -hmm. Ooh, comfortably numb. Because a Thank lot of Lord. people are that way. A lot of people are comfortably numb, and they just go yeah. through life. Sure. Being comfortably numb. Being because numb isn't always comfortable, though. People think that alcohol and drugs give you uh, doesn't give you long term. It gives you short term comfort, and those short term bursts of comfort do not lead to stability. Therefore, your life is completely upside down in addiction. For sure. For yeah. Sure. People need structure. Our brains need structure. You can say that again. Sorry, I'm trying to send you this file. That's why I'm looking away. I just found it. It's okay. Okay. Sending you um code. Okay. All right. And I'm gonna. Huh? You want one? Or, sorry. I can have two. Okay. Let's see if we can get this one. Too. And I'm gonna temporarily leave this page so to get in. Alright, then it's been new. The other sign in a separate email. Mm -hmm. I said Yahoo.com. I wasn't kidding, you really? That's her. <laughs> Hello. Say what, honey? So my neck hurts. I need a new pillow. I'm just filling the air while we're trying to download this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to help you that. so bad. I do, honestly. I want to. I want to help you so much. I'll get it pulled out. 
I like to hang, hang myself. I got a little apparatus I put around my neck and I kind of take pressure off my spine. Being caught in the act, I would have to do some explaining, but it really does help. It's like the opposite of an inverter's table. <laughs> Is that crude? That was probably too crude. <laughs> no, Henry. Um, I can right. be very crude. But you're allowed to be. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to light this candle. Yeah, do that. Because I got mine going. <laughs> Maybe incense. Dragon's blood. I actually like the egg chop. I love dragon's blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. What did I do? When people get depressed, they don't have to go oh. No, no, Henry, don't. I apologize. <laughs> I like to go to the thrift store, and if you're a man's man, you can always go garbage man. You can yeah. have cool things like this lovely desk that I am sitting at. <laughs> garbage. Thrift shopping. I'll go to the stores. Yeah, okay. my, my well, kids do that a lot. All right. Hold yeah, on. it's very like, vintage things. You just like put it together. What's that? I had, you know, for a first part there. Vintage? Uh, yeah, thrift shopping. I found like so many vintage stuff. Oh. My art is free for like performances or like pictures. For oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're good good stuff there. You gotta be careful sometimes. Uh, yeah. people tell me bed bugs and I stay away from the thrift store for like a little a, yeah. <laughs> right. Go, right. I give it a month, I give it a month to be all right. Why do we do that? Staying up with stupid ideas. Right. <laughs> so do I have two daddy issues or one daddy issue? I got three, four, five, six, holy crap. Oh, what well, was sent you that? Picture. One, two, three, four, five. I got six daddy issues. Oh my god! Hey, it's that important. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is it that so sounds good? very bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Does the um a fallen? I have a fallen. I have okay, a few, yeah. Few, yeah, I got a few of them. Do I got you see coke anywhere in there. Yeah, that was the first one. I only gave me once. Thank goodness. Okay, I'm deleting all these other ones. Yes. And it could have been me, honestly. I'm not I'm not saying it wasn't me. I, I promise you. It, it probably was me. <laughs> no, you're good. Nine times out of ten, it was me. <laughs> I, I The button wasn't working when I pushed it the first time, so I was just like, what is this going on here? Two years ago, you could have sent this file in like a minute. You could have sent them over Messenger. I don't understand what they did this for. It actually is probably everything is encrypted now and everything's a lot different. Okay, so I do have I do have um it twice on both of them. That's okay though. Okay. Okay. So what do you want to hear first? Um, we can do cope since that was my first baby, first one I ever dropped by myself. I've been trying to cope with my feelings Been trying to speak the help but no one's hearing no wanna cry, really can't deny, I always feel so alone, why do I hold it all in, that ain't how you do it, yeah, scared of vulnerability, I don't wanna feel weak, but that's just how I cope, I don't got no business, I would feel like a joke, maybe I should open up, but I can't let go, I 
fact, I can't control it. Tries so hard to press in my emotions, so I don't have to open up. Then I end up feeling stuck. I wanna know the unknown. Don't know why I pretend. Why I put myself through this? Yes. Don't wanna fake it. I just wanna break it. But that's just how I go. Cause I would feel like a joke Maybe I should open up But I can't let go I don't wanna fight Afraid of being judged yeah, I don't wanna go yeah, That's just how I go I don't got no business I would feel like a joke Maybe I should open up But I can't let go I don't wanna fight Afraid of being judged yeah, I don't wanna go yeah. Sometimes I fall It's okay if I sleep on And punch out the holes in my wall And cover them up with the dark things I draw Sometimes I scream when I'm driving Take gas at the traffic And it's the key for you Post it first on my profit Write six paragraphs now Fall it up, put it in the sun But that's just how I go Business, I would feel like a joke. Maybe I should open up, but I can't let go. I don't wanna fight, afraid of being judged. Yeah, I don't wanna go. Yeah, that's just how I go. I don't got no business. I would feel like a joke. Maybe I should open up, but I can't let go. I don't wanna fight. That beat was hard. Thank you. I love it. That beat was hard. It was jazzy. Um, coffee house, <laughs> weed smoking. <laughs> that shit was hard. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. Your voice is—you have such a wonderful. Uh, Deep range. What do you consider yourself? Um, I, can, I can do all tones, so all of them, I guess. Yeah, that's. I love those low notes you do. So um, really, really sultry. I don't know what else kind of. I just love it. What I love most is that you're comfortable. Some people have a range, um, and they are super, super talented. Their comfort, though, yeah. when they sing, isn't confident. Yeah, you, yes. you're comfortable. You don't have a lot of splits confidence. and breaks in that. You pretty much continuous uh, vocalize the whole track. It's really good. But you, but you know what the thing is? Why it's that way? Because you believe in what you say. Yeah, that's what it is. A lot of people say something because it sounds good and because that's what they that's hip and that's what's going on right now, and they're not really really feeling it and believing it. You believe in what you say. Yeah. Yeah. I was just that that song got me through some hard times. Yeah. Our intro, um, that's Jabrell. Oh, I knew. Oh, oh, I lost her. Know. Look at oh, see. No, that, <laughs> that was such a great reaction, though. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> you got so excited you went out. <laughs> oh gosh, this internet does not want us to be great tonight. No. <laughs> but that that's Jabral with our intro, so That's insane though. I I thought it was him because the voice sounded so familiar. He just texted me today and sent me some encouragement. So I I love the intro though. He's he's such a sweet, genuine person. He is but he felt it, see? And and when you feel something you resonate with it, he hit everything about what our podcast is about and um I don't know if he knew, but like everybody loves that. Everybody loves our intro and that's all Jabral. That's all Jabral. Yeah. He he did his thing, and you like you said, you can definitely tell that he felt it. That's yeah. what that when you feel it, it conveys authentically. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for a while now, man. Well, how long we've been doing? A year now. Uh, he's all a very authentic person. I've always really liked Jabril. Lots of love. That's that's my heart. Lots of love, Jabril. Love trains. Seven twenty nine. Seven twenty nine. Love you, Jabril. <laughs> Hell yeah. But here, um, let's let's do the um daddy issues real quick here. Yes. All right, 
falling. Played your role, you should do better. Made me a fool, you're a homewrecker. Say you would change. Light me something strange. Do you have the sight to see? Was hoping for change, you let me down. Trapped in your game, go round and round. Throw me insane, a better ground. Now I'm a falling, falling for your eyes. Falling, falling, till my sight once again. You play me till the end. You win. Falling. I think I might have sent the wrong file. I don't think that was big. It. It has some oh. AC Gray kind of feel to it. I I was digging it too. Oh, you were okay. Well, if y'all are digging it, you can keep listening. I think that's one of the un unfinalized versions. I had eight of them. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say, not every song needs to have the title in it. Which is bigger. I'm like, what was? It? I'm like, you didn't say daddy issues. I'm like, that's cool. No, it's it's <laughs> fallen. Fallen's the title. Daddy no, issues is the album. Yes. Do you want? Oh. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to freestyle it? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I can. You want me to? Yeah, go ahead. The whole thing, or just some of it? I, whatever you feel comfortable. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. Played your role, you should do better. Made me a fool, you're a homewrecker. Said you would change, oh, yo, you lied on me, something so strange. Do you have the sight to see? I was hoping for change, you let me down. Trapped in your games, go round and round. Drove me insane, you better ground. All right, I'll give you guys. <laughs> that was better than playing the song. It was that better than playing the song. Holy real. shit, that was Thank better you. than playing the song. Thank you. I have bronchitis right now. I don't know if you can tell, but... No. No, even though... <laughs> <laughs> You got some wonderful vocal chops. Yeah, there. no. Uh-uh, that's for real, for real. Uh-uh. <laughs> I ain't bronchitis. mad at Good you. Control. <laughs> I'm going to the doctor tomorrow to get a steroid shot, but it's been struggling. So thank you. I'm happy it sounded okay. No, <laughs> Um, do do an yeah. onion. Do an onion. Please don't go get a steroid shot. Onion. Please don't okay. do a steroid shot. You can okay. do. You can do uh, onion. Put the onion in the microwave for about two minutes. Then put salt on top of it. Put it back in the microwave Ooh. for another minute. Let that juice flow, and then add some honey to it. And the, anything that you soak out of the out of the orange, you do it with the orange, and or onion. I, I meant an onion. Time. Yep, out of that. So <laughs> smush it. Out, get the juice out of it, and use that. Um, ginger, garlic, onion. These are all better um, than anything. Oregano. Okay. Put some oregano in water, make a tea out of it. Them are so much better than any steroid and antibiotic out there. Yeah, because I've been on antibiotics for two weeks. This, it's not, they thought it was whipping cough at first. It hasn't run away. No, it's you'll become way. septic. Stop. Mm -hmm. If you keep doing this, you're going to become septic. And that's your body's just immune to the um, antibiotics yeah. that they're not kicking in. Yes, I definitely think I'm at that point. Because I work at a daycare and I've been sick for the past seven months. And no antibiotics don't work for me. So. Make your own. <laughs> Make your own. Do do that with the onion, please. Put on put children in this. Do well, kids. I had to ask. Bro. Put the red onions on your socks. Put the red onions on your socks <laughs> and sleep with the so uh, onions um on your feet in um at nighttime. Okay. Uh, put Vicks on your toes. Them are all okay. things you can do too. But please don't go get the steroid shot. I don't know. I, I don't normally tell people against anything, but for some reason, I'm I'm just letting you know. Don't do it. Yeah, I think you're gonna go septic. You're. Oh. It seems like you're immune to it. Yeah, I definitely am. Okay. I'll definitely try all of that. Thank you. So, Hockaday, what's he say? So, um, 
Dustin, do you see that? That's um D Day. Do yeah. you see what D Day said? Hackaday. Hackaday. I don't know why. What's Hackaday? Do you know? Oh. You know D Day? Dustin Great Gatsby Hackaday. That's D Day. That's our guy. Um, great yeah. soul. Great soul. Great soul. Great soul. He might want to um collab. He's he's amazing artist. Is he not Henry? Oh, he is indeed. It, 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 uh, great person. I'm looking for collabs right now, so definitely hit me up. You hear that, D-Day? Hit her up. <laughs> That's a great energy right there, though. That would be an amazing collab because he's all about universal, spiritual, um, uplifting. Um, what's he say? He said, he needs your info. He loves your voice. He wants your info. But yeah, type it in the comments. But DJ's amazing, amazing. One of my favorite. Like I got a few favorite artists, and he's definitely one of them for sure. He reminds me of. So, let me see somebody that you probably know that he would remind you me of. Um, he reminds me of um Max the a little bit. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So he's definitely a vibe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Max is really good entertainer. Amazing. Not only is Max a good entertainer, but he's um, great with his um, words. He's great on the world word play and um, just a good soul. Yeah, absolutely. I love people who are good with word play. Yeah. Love, 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 love. love. Me too. Me too. That's hard to find. Like honestly, a lot of artists are so full of like how you said the things that people are comfortable talking about, which is the money and mm -hmm. you know the. Um, yeah, and club and all that stuff, which is cool. I feel like you need a balance, but I don't feel like there's nobody talking about the traumas, the pain, how to how they cope through it, how they got through it, what they experienced, their fear of being vulnerable, all of that. So, some artists definitely is the some artists are out there. What's his name? Kevin Gate talking about the Jake Cole's very odd. Yeah. I love. I've been on a Jake Cole pack. He's really good. Oh, I love Jake Cole. Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar's whole new album is all about Kendrick healing. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been consistently good. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a good musician. Thousand percent. There's a lot of them out there. It's good. We have a you lot coming on our show. <laughs> we have a lot of them coming on our show. They've been on our show and they're coming on our show. So we have a lot of good local artists. We got um artists from Ohio, artists from New York that are coming on our show pretty soon. Um, okay. I reach out to the people that do the sponsors all the time, the the little ads. Oh, okay. And yeah. I I every time I see one of their ads, I'll reach them out to them and I'm like, hey, come on my podcast. A lot of them say yes. So good. This is a really good podcast. I'm so honored. Oh, well, thank I, you. We're trying really hard. You can come yeah. back anytime. Seriously, next time you drop something big and you want to talk about it, come back and promote it. We don't I mind. Real. No, I definitely will. You guys have been so amazing. Yeah. So pop, uplifting, encouraging. I love this so much. Good. This is wonderful. We are the people's podcast, and that's what we're here for. Is for the people. Yes. We, yeah, we talk yeah. about the things that nobody wants to talk about. Period. And we need more. We need more views. Yes. Because the community, society, the world needs it. We don't talk enough. So no. thank you for taking time of your guys' day to even do this. Because I know just like I have a crap, this is your guys' crap. It takes time, effort, energy, and passion. So kudos to you guys for even coming up with this and yeah. staying consistent. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Also, Henry. Henry is a, a dope artist. Henry is one of my artists, and every time I do an event, Henry opens. Henry <laughs> um, is a great um, uh, vocalist, and he plays uh, many different instruments. He probably like plays three or four different instruments. Okay, so you don't mind me playing along the co-plane around, do you? I, I love R&B, and I love R&B uh, guitar playing, bass playing. So all of a sudden, there the whole time, I'm thinking over all the jazz chords I can be playing along with. I, love I try not to talk about my shit all the time, but it just happens. No, you should, because you work on it, and you love it, and you're passionate about it, so talk about it. And when he don't, I will, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to, I'm yeah, always right. going to. Good. Right. Good. That'd be wonderful. wonderful. I'm looking, I'm always looking for good stuff to play See, with. See, look at, Henry's got the strings. 
D Day said Henry's got the strings. Yeah. He got the strings, yes. Henry can play for real, for real. I do, I do try to keep the strings on deck. And not only Woo! that, but I've broken them repeatedly on stage playing too hard. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to hit you up too. Yeah, <laughs> every, one of, every one of my events, that's my opener. I've been trying to organize some of these beats. I'm trying to write some music for TikTok right now, which is okay. done with my pretty keyboard. I'm doing all kinds of arrangements, which is really cool. And then I do guitars and... I just want to collab with musicians. I'm in an isolated location. And I have a very sick uh, partner. My spouse is away from surgery, so I have not been able to go out and do anything. It's been hard. To do, but... Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Henry, grab your guitar real quick. I know it's close by. <laughs> she said, "I know it's." <laughs> Told you. No way. I, I know it's close by. Uh... Okay. Yes. The new one you just wrote, Henry. The one you just wrote. What's that? The song you just wrote. I wrote a lot of songs recently. <laughs> you want me to play a song? Yep. <coughs> Which song is that? I don't care, Henry. Ooh. Oh, no, I don't like being on the spot. Let's try this one. It's going to be a rough cut. No, I can't do it right now. I didn't warm up for anything. Henry. I'm going to play along to something. There's at least something. Wow. Henry's good. <laughs> Henry, do the letter. Do the letter real quick, then. Oh, you know what? Hold on, guys. Let me do something really fast. Something I'm working on for, for, for TikTok. I'm fine. <laughs> this will take me one second. I'm going to play. Let's go. I got a mini keyboard I use to a program. It's got some necklaces and bullshit on it. Right? That's how I roll. Disorganized. All right, thank you. Okay. Woo, so Henry. <laughs> yes. I try to get him out of his comfort zone sometimes. Yes. Uh, that's a track called Motivation. I'm going to be trying to do with like uh, overcoming addiction through working out. Wow. That's beautiful. So you're thank you. Period. I've never done that live before like this on the podcast, so that's the first record. Thank well, so good much. job. You killed it. Henry yeah. is a musician. He has a, 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 a thing called the Henry Show, Henry Show Show, and he is a musician. Henry he definitely is a musician. I'm a, mus I'm a musician whose focus is drug and alcohol recovery and mental health, so I was really excited. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. I'm excited to talk to you. <laughs> That's huge. I love that. I'm, I'm going to be hitting you up soon, too. <laughs> yeah. Bye. That's good. That's good. I'd love to collab or something. That's good. Yeah. Five years over here for everybody asking. Yeah, I lived 19 years in a bottle. It was a really hard life. Mom was a violent abuse of drugs. So music's yeah. everything to me. And I'm seeing you do this and promoting your message. Literally, I, I was kind of tearing up during the cold real talk. It really? was good shit. Oh. It moves me a lot. We're so glad to have you. Oh my God! Thank you for having me. It's been a blessing to even talk to you guys, and I love your message and your story. Your story deserves to be heard. So thank you for even being vulnerable yes. and telling us because I can imagine how hard that was. So I I love you, and I don't use love like I love you too, and I love you, Kimberly. <laughs> I do. I, 
I say I love people because it's not like an intimate kind of thing. I love people, and yes. I love people who are real. So yes, absolutely. Yes. Love is the answer, and I have unconditional love for everybody. And Henry's my other son, so it doesn't even matter. That's my baby. So. I love you, love. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are amazing. I. I can't even express how much I literally enjoyed myself. <laughs> no, we thank you for coming on for real. Um, anytime you want to hit us up and come back on, you can. You, I mean, you come on as a host like Henry does, and then I'll, I'll still, I'll still get you out there because when I introduce people, what I do is say, "Hey, this is Henry. He plays the guitar, drums, da 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 da." And then I'd be like, this is Lauren. She, he's got an amazing voice. I do introduce people that way for what they do because not everybody gets recognized. And I'm all about people getting recognized. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love that so yeah. much. That's such you're, a you're a doll, please come back. Whenever you get free. Yes. <laughs> and very soon. Yes. <laughs> like, very, very soon. Yes. Next time you get right, something dropped, come and let us know. You come back on. You can come back on as a, um, a, a one of our hosts. All right. I'm we are a hub for entertainment and spreading the word about the entertainers and the efforts. Yeah. So. I got you. I got you. I'll post, we share, tell everybody about it. Like you guys are the truth. Thank you. We ha we have an event coming up. Um, Jabrell has the um Unity Track coming up this Saturday, from um nine o'clock in the morning until whenever we get to Detroit. So it's walking from Pontiac to Detroit. There's a lot of breaks in between and whatnot. It's good for your mental health and it's good for your physical health and it's good just to be able to um say you did it. Yes. I love the fact that you guys do events like that either too, because the community needs that yeah. truly. It'll it keeps us away from the things like alcohol and yeah. drugs and stuff. It helps us just kind of stay focused and kind of be there for each other. So I love that too. So, and then, um, Jarrell's got the love trade coming up again, um, because that one got canceled. So, the next one's the 29th. Everybody come out to the love trade. Yeah. Love trade. Because well, of rain. Yep, yeah, to the 29th. <laughs> 29th of September? Of July. This of month. July. Oh, okay. I, I this <laughs> Oh, that's coming right up again, yeah, too. And then, okay. and then um, we got Everyone Eats. And Everyone Eats is an event that we're putting on. Um, we're giving people places to take a shower. They're, and we're going to have um, shower stalls. We're going to have <laughs> shower stalls, clothes, haircuts, food, and entertainment. Um, we got a lot of people that are helping us put it on. Um, I'm trying to figure out what place we want to do it at yet. So the date isn't set in stone yet, so there's no flyer out yet. Um, I'm pushing for next week the flyer to get put out. Um, so be aware, be on the look for everyone eats. It's going to be August anywhere from the 13th or the 19th. So Bad. that's so dope. And everything's free. And all they got to do is just go and subscribe to the, our link tree and like the people because we're going to do it for love. So just show support. We're going to help you. Oh my God. That is such a selfless, like giving act to do. That is huge because there's so many people, so many families yeah. that don't have is to even take, like you said, something as simple as being able to take a shower or yep. have a head, so or a haircut. That's beautiful. Addie Bowers um donated a bunch of clothes to us. Um, so we got a bunch of brand new clothes for people. Um, yeah, and some personal items, undergarments, everything. So, wow, definitely you get the flyer send it to you. I'm gonna make sure I post the message. Yeah, for it. sure, for sure. But it's all about the community. That's what we do. We give back to each other because we all need each other. True. That's true. Y'all need somebody to lean on. So. For sure. So that oh, they were right here, y'all. Big shoulders. Big shoulders. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> well, thank you for I, coming I, I on, babe. Going. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, Henry, you want to say anything before we head out? Uh, yeah. Just an awkward Midwest pause goodbye. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm bad. I don't know. This is a wonderful time. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. You too. I'm gonna be talking to us very soon. Yes. May everybody's night be full of positive energy and high vibrations. Peace and love, everybody. Yeah. Ashe.